There's a huge market designing and selling enzymes on an industrial scale. The next three bioinformatics assignments deal with an enzyme product with a long history of biotechnological developments, detergent enzymes. Enzymes are added to detergents as stain removers, whiteners, brighteners, and softeners. Enzymes are gentler to fabrics and more environmentally friendly than chemical detergents. Enzymes are single protein products that are playing increasingly significant roles in the $6 billion a year laundry detergent business. Novozymes is a large multinational biotechnology company that specializes in industrial enzymes such as those used in detergents. Novozymes has a research division in South Davis that often hires UCD graduates. For the next three weeks, you'll play the role of a protein engineer at Novozymes, whose project it is to modify a detergent enzymes for improved performance in cold water. If this works, it could be worth a lot of money. But to do this, you first need to know how detergents work. As we all know, water is made up of two hydrogen and one oxygen atoms. But notice how the structure is asymmetrically drawn. This is because oxygen and hydrogen atoms don't equally share their electrons, but rather oxygen takes a few extra. This results in the oxygen side of the molecule being somewhat negatively charged, while the hydrogen side of the molecule is relatively positive. Because water has a negative and a positive side, it's considered a polar molecule, kind of like the poles on the Earth. Now let's look at a fat molecule, triacetin. Fat molecules have a more even distribution of electrons around the molecule, and neither side is more negatively charged than the other. We call these types of molecules nonpolar. So why is polarity important in clothes washing? The general rule is that likes dissolve likes. Polar molecules dissolve in nonpolar solutions like water, while nonpolar molecules don't dissolve in water, but rather in nonpolar solvents. So when you get a butter stain on your shirt, it doesn't wash out with water because fat doesn't dissolve in polar solutions. And this is where soap comes in. Take a look at the soap molecule sodium stearate. Here you see it as a ball and stick model. We can also draw it in the more typical skeletal formula. The trick with soap is that it has both a polar head and a nonpolar tail. The long nonpolar tail associates with the fat while the small polar head associates with water. Soap then encapsulate the fat molecules to form an emulsion, which can then get washed away. Hot water works better than cold because it enhances solubility and it softens fats. For almost 5,000 years, soap was made on a small scale using the materials at hand. Fat came from slaughtered animals, and this was treated with alkaline that came from the ashes that were made when farmers cleared their land. The Industrial Revolution in the 1800s spawned the growth of the large soap factories. And these were often near meat processing facilities so that they could have access to the fat. In the 1850s, Cincinnati, Ohio was the biggest meat packing center in the United States. It also was home to at least 17 soap factories, one of which was made by two soap makers, William Proctor and James Gamble. Today, Procter & Gamble has grown to the world's largest consumer goods company with $84 billion a year in sales. Sales of Gillette razors, Crest toothpaste, Pampers diapers, and the biotechnology marvel central to your homework assignment, Tide Detergent. Modern detergents have lots of cleaning ingredients. The primary being surface active agents, or surfactants, that, like soap, contain nonpolar ends that bind grease and polar ends that allow the emulsion to be washed away in water. Detergents are synthetic soaps that were first developed and later expanded in response to fat shortages that occurred during the World Wars. Clothes get dirty from a number of molecules. Fatty acids from your skin causes collar grime. Volatile fatty acid causes body odor, food stains, grass stains, grease stains, but most of these can be broken down by enzymes. The enzyme names are derived by adding an ACE to the substrate molecules that they act on. Protease is a protein stain remover because it degrades proteins. Amylase is a starch stain remover. Lipase is a grease remover. Mananase is a mannin stain based remover. 
And pectinase is a food-based stain removal. One of the goals of biotechnology companies is to identify or engineer enzymes that work in detergents at different temperatures. They're particularly interested in cold water washing because this would save a lot of energy costs. When a good laundry detergent enzyme is found, they're generally patented, and so the search for new optimized enzymes is ongoing. For your assignment, you need to find the gene sequence of a desired detergent enzyme, you need to determine its protein sequence, and you're going to make a three-dimensional model of its structure. This project has been broken into three weekly assignments. All the assignments are in the assignment section of SmartSight. You can turn in all three assignments at any time, but you need to have at least completed the weekly assignment by the date posted. Have fun.